a little over two days away, and uh, I think we talked about a bot for these matches last time, so they will just run through them quickly, and uh, mm -hmm. there will be uh, there will be something in the near future for that uh, one of these matches that we're talking about, uh, but at least for one of them. But uh, just run through them real quick. First off, the Fatal Four Way match for the tag team titles: uh, Tyson Kidd and Cesaro, the tag champs, against uh, Big E and Kofi of the New Day, the Los Manadores, and the Usos, who are back from uh, injury, I guess. Uh, I guess one of them, I, I guess one of them was injured. I think it was Jay that was had a shoulder shoulder injury. I think. Uh, I'm not quite sure, but I think it's Jay that has it. But they're in a tough route, and that's gonna that's gonna happen. Uh, what will happen here, though, is uh, Cesaro and and Kid will probably win this match. I mean. They just won the titles a while, like a month or two ago, so it would be great to have new tag team champions, but I doubt it because they literally lost the belts to the Usos a month or so ago, if, if I have that right, because they had a match at Fastlane, from what I remember, and they won the belts there, or they won them at the Rumble, they had or won them at the Rumble or Fastlane, so they've only had them for a month or two, depending on how long they actually held the belts. So it would not make sense for them to lose the belt, but this is a four corners match, I believe, uh, much like like tag, tag titles were at WrestleMania 20. So unless it's unless it's tornado, I doubt it. But I, uh, if anything, any of these teams deserve to have the belt. Mostly, I would want to see a new tag team hold it, because so, I honestly believe that Tyson Kidd and Cesaro will, and the Usos will cancel each other out. So the New Day or the the, the condom heads, fucking Matadors, will fucking win the belt. Uh, Orton and Reigns, nothing's really changed here, so uh, I don't really care for this. I mean, I care for it, but if anything, Rollins needs to win so he can cash in the belt for the main event. But with the recent uh, weeks of Stone Cold Randy Orton with him doing the double bird, I doubt he'll lose his return match. I, I doubt it. AJ Lee and Paige versus the Bellas in a non-title tag team match, which it's not a fatal four-way any like I thought it would be. Paige, AJ, uh, Paige, AJ and Paige are on the same page to pardon the pun, and they did the best promo for the Divas I have seen in a long time. Holy shit, that was fucking amazing. And that was like one of the only segments on SmackDown. I think at least SmackDown was just like two matches, two free matches, and a couple promos and a bunch of access stuff which I love seeing the access stuff uh, but the Bellas are slowly but surely losing uh, if you've seen Total Divas they, they are basically not resigning their contracts so within the next year they'll be gone so unless they resign unless they change their mind about anything the, they will lose this match and AJ and Paige will win and maybe whoever gets the will get a title shot and take the title off of Nikki Bella Cena and Rusev. This match has not really changed much, but I will just say this about the United States Championship. The fact that this is being in the main event. Basically, you are making this belt a main event belt. Because regardless of what happens, this, this belt will be pushed up as well as the superstar that holds it. If not both of them. Uh, Rusev, if he wins, he will not only keep his undefeated streak alive, uh, as we're count not counting the qualifications or, or countouts because those were just ways to make him look strong and keep his momentum going like a Survivor Series them, him fucking splashing himself on the table through the table and getting himself counted out I think he was DQ'd once on Smackdown or twice on Smackdown with Roman Reigns so that doesn't really count he's never been pinned he's never been submitted and if he wins this match he will not only remain undefeated but he will be undefeated at Wrestlemania 1-0 and John Cena however I think I think has lost to Wrestlemania before but if John Cena wins this match that will basically keep him away from the main, main event. Uh, I mean, it won't keep him away from the main event. It'll keep him away from the, the world title, for sure. Because he's elevating the U.S. title to main event status. As well as, we could possibly bring back the spinner belt. Uh, and I, I, well, I just want to say that the, the WWE spinner belt was shit, but I loved the U.S. spinner. I, I wouldn't have mind seeing it on another person. But, you know, they got rid of it, and Orlando Jordan held it, and Carlito held it, and whatever happened back in 04. It was a great it was a great time uh, in 05. It was a great time, but uh, I would love to see it personally and see it happen. 
uh, Undertaker and Wyatt, this will be the match of the fucking night, if not the match of the fucking century. You have the modern day Waylon Mercy in Bray Wyatt, and possibly the new Undertaker in Bray Wyatt. And you have the return of the Undertaker. Whoever wins will be on a winning streak because uh, Wyatt lost to Cena last year at Mania, I believe, and then he would be 1-1. One and one. And Undertaker, if he were the win, he would be 22-1. and one. But if anything, I mean, Undertaker's role right now is to push new stars. What the streak should have been was this match last year, but it didn't happen. And if that would have happened, I would have said Bray Wyatt would have beaten the streak. Just because you need that new Mystique character, and Bray Wyatt is that. And then we have the Intercontinental title... Hardcore title debacle in the ladder match. Basically, Kane has the title. To, no. Basically, a steel ring is now the holder of the belt. Because Kane had to put it on, on top of the ring. On a fucking crane. On a fucking... By the way, uh, Levi's Stan doesn't have a fucking roof. So they're going to have to have a fucking crane or something hold the belt at this point. Unless they're doing like a canopy or something and have a little rope of some kind holding the belt. I, I don't understand why you would do a ladder match in an outdoor stadium. I mean, it's been done before. Ladder, Money in the Bank had it. I, I think I think Money in the Bank happened one time in an outdoor arena. So they, they've done it before, but it has not been done since. So I want to see, if anything, how this match would happen. Uh, but with this title match concerns, uh, because that's with the champion Barrett, or truth uh, Bradley's Barrett, or truth uh, Dean Ambrose, Luke Harper, Bill Ziggler, Stardust, and Daniel Bryan. This was going to happen here. Bryan and Ambrose will cancel each other out. Truth and Harper... No, actually, no, I take that back. Uh, Brian has a chance of winning this match, but him and Ziggler will probably cancel each other out. Uh, which leaves only three people. And Stardust, uh, honestly, will probably get destroyed by Cody, uh, Goldust. Uh, just, just to keep that feud going. So it really is down to two people. If not three people. Uh... Luke Harper, who is, in my mind, the modern-day Bruiser Brody. A great talent, nonetheless, and he's an amazing guy. Holy shit. If he held the title in this match, it would be amazing. R-Truth. No one cancels him out except Dean Ambrose. Uh, but I doubt that because he'll be going after Barrett. And Truth, although he's afraid of spiders and heights, he might actually be a dark horse to win it. Now, the question is... Will Daniel Bryan win the title? Will Daniel Bryan have the Yeslomania continue going from the world title to the Intercontinental title? I'm just going to say this right now. At first, I was like, uh, you know, like everybody else, why is he not in the Rumble? Why is Roman Reigns winning this Rumble? But now I think about it, and, you know, he could have been in the Honor of Giant Memorial Battle Royal, which would have been great. But you have a chance to revitalize the United States and Intercontinental title on the same night and make them main event titles like they were stepping stones to the world title like they used to be, instead of now being low-card belts, or, or lower, I mean, even lower mid-card, perhaps even, not even mid-card anymore, it's like fucking low-card, like the like the main event, like the mid-card belts uh, used to be the World Heavyweight title when it was not unified with the uh, now undisputed title and the Money in the Bank briefcases. Basically, the briefcase is now the, the mid-card belt at this point, in our time on WWE. But, if Brian were to win this match, that would be great because he actually has a title again. And uh, he never did get his rematch for the, for the title because he never lost it. But you know what? You use this match to build towards that. You do not need everything right now. You do not need to be ADD or, or artistic or something. I hate using those examples. But every, it's like a moment where everyone wants everything right now. And they will not shut up until they get it. And if they hate it, they will want something else and they will want that now. So you need to actually look in perspective of this. Look in perspective of this. Bleh. Uh, Daniel Bryan, if he wants his belt, he will make the Intercontinental title worth something instead of just hot potato like it's been. I don't mind the hot potato like I have the past few weeks, but it's just dumb in my opinion. And then we look at the Under the Giant Memorial Battle Royal because I do know one man that is in this, and his name is Hideo Itami from NXT, otherwise known as Kenta. I've actually wanted to talk about this guy for a very long time, and I think I've talked about him maybe once or twice on the XT cards. Uh, but the guy... Let me just put this in perspective. The man 
that made the GTS, the Bazooka Knee, now known as the Knee Plus, and several other moves, to the point where CM Punk and Daniel Bryan asked Kenta Hideo Itami for his permission and blessing of these using these moves in the course of the rest of his history. But he won a uh, NXT tournament at uh, Access uh, Access over the past few days. I think they announced they announced it on SmackDown. I know that much. After they announced it via social media, which is very weird. So hopefully we'll see something about it on the Hall of Fame or Mania or something. Uh, and uh, Hideo Itami, I would personally love to see a GTS just because of the man who originated it, Kenta, Hideo Itami, whatever you want to call him. The man is fucking great. And, uh, if anything, it would be great to debut him. Uh, by the way, this match is on the kickoff. I don't know why, but, uh, I think they did this last year as well. And I don't mind it because it's a two-hour kickoff show. And you need something like this to, to, to be a great match. Because there's no way the tag titles um, and this match will be under an hour. I will just say that much. Uh, but Hideo Itami is one of the, uh final people in this battle royal, at least as I know, there will be probably be more made at the Hall of Fame and right before WrestleMania, or there will be a few surprises, like there were last year with David Otunga, uh, believe it or not, actually being in that battle royal. I had to look, watch it back, and he actually was in the battle royal. But if Itami wins this fucking battle royal, that would be a great way to debut him, to win a prestigious thing, the equivalent now of the streak. If you win this match, you will be somebody in the WWE. And that'd be a great way to fucking take him out. Personally, I would have wanted to see him and Finn Balor in this match. Because Balor, uh, with reports, you know, the past few months, he's not wanted to be in developmental for long, so that would have been great. Plus, the entrance would have been fucking amazing. But, I digress. You have this star in Hideo Itami, the former Kenta. And now, you have him in this match. He points at the sign. <laughs> He actually did point at the sign. I actually saw a picture of him pointing at the sign. It was fucking great. Uh, but Tommy, he has the skills to do it. Will he do it? I don't know. It's Vince McMahon booking. So, I don't know. Anything can happen here. And then finally, uh, Triple H and Sting. Uh, nothing's really changed here. Uh, so, it's going to be a great match regardless. But the big story. Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. Now, Brock Lesnar has re-signed WWE. Meaning... This could probably change how everyone books this thing, or everyone predicts this thing, because everyone's thinking, oh, Brock Lesnar drops the belt, and Brock Lesnar goes to UFC. He has closed the door on the UFC. So this means we could actually have the match that we've wanted for the past year or two, which was Daniel Bryan versus uh, Brock Lesnar for the belt. That would have been fucking amazing. I, based, I, I think last year I wanted to see that at Extreme Rules, and then at SummerSlam or something, and then, you know, Bryan had his injury, and you know, something happened. But now he's back, we can have that match. But, on Raw, you had the stupidest piece of shit ending ever. Basically, a Rugrats tug of war for the belt between these two idiots. I mean, Paul Heyman did an amazing job, but I personally now do not give a fuck about this match. If anything, I would love to see Brock Lesnar beat the ever-loving shit out of Roman Reigns. That would be the only thing that justifies this. But who is the champion? Who even has the title now? We'll find out Sunday. But I just want to say this. That is not how you should book a fucking thing. Like that. That was ridiculous. Even Russo shitted on it. And if Russo shits on it, what the fuck are you doing?